What's up, AHS? Welcome back to another episode of Critical Content. I'm your host, Jacob, and here with me is my co-host, Ben. Uh, we have four great guests today. Let's introduce them for you guys, starting the furthest away from me. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Mr. Spiller coming at you. Hi, this is, my name is Connor Fair. My name is Evan Cruz. Harrison Mandrala. And that's it. All right, well, uh, without further ado, let's get uh, right into some questions, boys. This one's directed for Mr. Spiller. Um, what does freedom mean to you? Okay, that's a biggie. Um, freedom is a is pretty large concept that I, I would say probably encompasses quite a bit. Um, personally, what it means to me is something to the effect of the ability to, to do what you want in the pursuit of your goals, in the pursuit of what makes you happy, in the pursuit of what fulfills you, as long as it doesn't take away those qualities from someone else's goals or pursuit of fulfillment. I'd like to think of a freedom for me is the ability to do something that I choose uh, when and how I want to do it. Again, with the stipulation, that it's, it's not negatively affecting somebody else. And maybe um, that's a good, good start. <clears throat> All right, our next question. We're actually just gonna ask the same question for Evan. Uh, what does freedom mean to you? Um, freedom to me is uh, the pursuit of happiness um, in an equal way all around. Um, so it may be different from citizen to citizen, but you know, overall, the pursuit of happiness. Great answer. Now, uh, we're just going to go down the line for this next question, starting with Harrison. When is the restriction of freedom a good thing, and when is it a bad thing? Restriction of freedom would be most likely a good thing, I mean, when, I mean, I would just say bad things are happening, such as acts of violence and whatnot, causes of death. Um, a good way of restriction of freedom is, especially I would consider this under a country if everything is just not going right. Say as like an example, like World War II, like Japanese um, citizens and whatnot, their freedom should have been restricted due to a, um, just a conflict with other nations and whatnot, so. Um, just like Harrison said, if you know, you're taking freedom too far and you're harming others. Um, I think that's an appropriate time to restrict your freedom. And yeah. Safety. Safety is a big concern. I, def I definitely agree. I definitely agree that freedom, I think freedom is more of a good thing just because of the uh, history that other nations have had, you know. But I think it's a personal thing, really. It kind of depends how it affects you. Could you repeat the question? <laughs> When is the restriction of freedom a good thing, and when is it a bad thing? Okay, so restriction of freedom is a good thing. Uh, one of the things that I've been struggling with uh, this year in teaching the forensics class is we did a discussion on the Boston Marathon bombers, and when they were looking for the second suspect um, after a really crazy interaction with law enforcement, uh, he was hiding in a boat. Maybe some of you guys remember that uh, news story, right? And so restriction of freedom, and I still have kind of issues about this, but uh, Boston PD pretty much put the whole city on lockdown, right? Constitutionally, was there precedent for that? Mm, I don't believe so. Um, restriction of freedom as a good thing. We, the law enforcement did catch this, the culprit and later convicted them, the, the individual. But was it right to have the whole city be put on lockdown and everybody stayed in their house without the ability to go out and do their thing? I'd say that's a restriction of freedom that ultimately came out, uh, had a good outcome, but I raised the question, was that appropriate? Were rights infringed upon? And then the second part of the question, um, one more time, can you read that second part? When is freedom a bad thing? When is freedom a bad thing? And I'd say, I piggyback off the other young man that when you start taking liberties that negatively affect other people, Say, for instance, uh, drunk driving, okay, or, or uh, impaired driving, because you can be impaired with something besides just booze, right? So, yeah, you have the freedom to drink and, and do your thing, and that might have negative health effects on you, but once you get behind the wheel and your judgment is impaired and you negatively impact, say, somebody else's grandma behind the wheel uh, because you run into them, um, I'd say that uh, is when freedoms cross the line. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's a bad thing when you abuse your freedom. That's when I think it becomes negative. Abuse of power. Excellent answers, gentlemen. All right, on to the next question. Harrison, how important is worth ethic, ethic in today's economy? I feel like overall, in general, work ethic means everything. 
I mean, throughout whether it's public education, especially nowadays in public education, such as high school, I mean, it's a high percentage of people going to college and whatnot, so you have to work hard to get into these certain schools. And then when you get into these certain schools, you have to work hard for further education and whatnot. And when you're out in the field, they want um, big companies. They want the best of the best, so you have to work hard for everything. And I feel like that's just been a thing forever, nowadays or even in the past. You have to work for what you want. Agreed. Well put. Um, work, work ethic, um, you know, especially as you get older, um, it's very important because things don't get handed to you as you get older, so you need to work harder for them. Um, whereas, you know, maybe now you get some things handed to you, but as you get older, it might get a little bit more tough to get things handed to you. Yeah, I, I agree. I think whether you're a student, an athlete, or whatever you're trying to do in your life, as you age and become older, um, your work ethic is very important. It kind of creates your personality. And I'm sorry, could you just say it one more time? So I want to make sure I hit your, your question on the head. <clears throat> How important is worth ethic in today's economy, Mr. Spiller? Okay. So I'd say, I agree with all the young men that uh, work ethic is something that is, I'd say, um, doesn't change over time, uh, the, the value of it. Um, what I've seen as I've gotten older uh, with my friends from high school, fast forward 20 years, I, I remember who was busting their tail trying to do what they could with the opportunities that were given to them at a young age. And I see now 20 years, 25 years later, um, the results of that labor. And some of my friends have started their own businesses, have uh, raised to the high ranks of nonprofit and corporate entities as executive officers. And then there's others that went to jail and overdosed on drugs. Uh, and I could see the, the, the dividends, the payoff now at, my, at this stage in my life, what, good work ethic does in any economy. Um, so I would advocate to young people today that um, old people look at young people and they say that work ethic has been compromised. And when we have electronic devices in our hands, and I try to tell my students, you don't start your shift on your phone. You don't want to be on your phone during your shift or during a business meeting because those are the people that um, are showing through their actions that their work ethic is impaired and the person sitting next to them that's got their pen and their paper and the edge of their seat uh, with big eyes uh, ready to take on the next task. Um, that sort of work ethic, as I um, started off, I'm gonna repeat and emphasize, will benefit you in the long run, uh, benefits you individually, your life, and the value and quality of your life as you get older, and no matter what economy. <clears throat> I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, next question. What is oppression and what are the root causes? Let's start with Connor first this time. Oppression? Uh, and the root causes. Um, I think it's really just the people. People, I mean, it's just us, obviously, you know. We create oppression. I mean, I feel like we, you know, it's obvious that we create conflicts amongst society. And um, sometimes we find other people to blame. And I think that's the issue in this world right now. And it's kind of unfortunate, but I think it's like the sad truth. Mr. Spiller, what's your take on that? Uh, I would agree that we do, I think, incur upon ourselves quite a bit of our own oppression. That could be through poor decision making, that could be through uh, maybe low self-esteem or low confidence, that we, we make things out to be harder than they are, which even at, at my age, I still have to try to address those issues. But I would say in the larger sense, um, you know, there's been, you know, we didn't just arrive on this planet today. Uh, there is a history of colonization across the globe through that um, imperialistic type of approach. There's been a global oppression to a lot of people just based on a geography or pigmentation in their skin. So here in America, in Nagawam, USA, what are we oppressed by? Um, well, I would say predominantly we have a lot. We have opportunities that these other places in the world have no clue and, and fantasize about. But I'd say what our problem is here in 01001 is our own self-inflicted oppression. In a larger sense, I'd say there's a lot of systemic stuff um, that's got a long history that in 20, 2019, we're still dealing with the uh, residuals of that uh, institutional oppression. <clears throat> I think, I think, sorry, I, I think politics are a huge role too. I feel like we just discriminate, discriminate against each other because of our own political beliefs. And I don't like that. So. And now, Harrison and Evan, that kind of leads us into uh, systemic 
uh, oppression. Do you guys believe in that? Like, do you believe it is really an issue in today's society? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know. Actually, I don't know the definition on the top of my head. What's what would what would even be um systemic oppression? Uh, it's it's a government institution institutionalized form of oppression that may be on a specific race or religion. I believe so. That would be that would be somewhat a thing. I mean, yeah, I believe that. How am I how am I gonna think and put this? Um, I would say I would say so. Yes, I mean, for example, I mean. Like say like oh you go to a college one and they they always like with like financial information one that they're always talking about oh what's your income what's your race what's your ethnicity and they they base it off that and say someone's more rich white person and whatnot they'll be charged more to go to a specific university but if you're on the more lower level of a social class and you're of a different race and whatnot I feel like they kind of they, they play um more more a favor card in that situation so I believe that's a thing. Um, I feel like nowadays a lot of people they play the blame game with each other um, and they don't take responsibility for problems that um, you know that they've brought upon themselves um, which leads to more and more problems with other people and it just keeps growing um, but I totally feel that that's a sense in today's um, government and across the world um, you know people just we have a divide you know especially politically between each other Definitely, and I'll go back to that thing. I mean, it's a, it's a good thing a lot of people stay true to themselves and whatnot, but um, still, no one will really agree on some stuff. They'll just stick to what their beliefs are. But yeah, but once again, that's a good thing, but on the other hand, yeah, we stubbornness. Have to, we have to understand that we all have like, different opinions, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. we're all, we all have like different lives, you know? Some people have different class, some people have, like financially, so I think politics play a huge role. It's hard to accept other people's beliefs and stuff like that, and I mean, it's tough, but it's something I feel like everyone has to do, and compromising, and I feel like that's a big situation. No one can really meet in a happy medium. Yeah, it's definitely a very controversial topic, especially in 2019. Yeah. Um, ben, would you like to ask the next question? Yes, I would. All right, we'll, uh, we'll start with Harrison on this one. Harrison, what factors shape our values and beliefs? Factors shape our values? I feel like it's really what you're born into, to be honest. I mean, it, the, the way you're brought up, if you were brought into more a conservative background, that's how you're gonna develop because, I mean, that repetition of what your um, family believes in develops an instinct within you. So I feel like that's the main root of it. And I mean, some, some people obviously they change their beliefs and stuff and whatnot based on how they grew up and what they see, but I feel like for the most part, it's the background they've grown up in. Well said. I feel like your um, your location, um, you know, especially the location that you grow up in, it really um, sways your beliefs and your opinions on certain topics, um, especially government-wise. Um, and you know, like Harrison said, your family and your upbringing. For me, I mean, it's more of a personal question because um, I was what kind of shaped me. My personality was definitely influencers you know I was inspired by like music and fashion so that kind of um, reflects my personality and who I am today it wasn't so much of where I was born and how my parents raised me but um, definitely influencers excellent yeah I, I like all of the statements I've heard so far I'd say you're very malleable at a young age and you're just a sponge and you're absorbing uh, philosophies emotional uh, responses that kind of thing I like piggybacking as you get older and you start becoming your own person. I'd say from like 12 on, you start becoming influenced by entertainment, by um, literature, by art, and that starts shaping you even more. <clears throat> Excellent answers. And now to uh, end it on more of a happy note, you know, not such a controversial topic, would any of you guys just like to chime in or say anything to uh, the people here at AHS? People here at AHS, I any mean. Any events going on for any sports, anything like a shout out like that? I don't know about you guys. Basketball season's coming up. Basketball I season, I mean, yeah, going to the basketball games. Basketball hockey, hockey. season. Yeah, pack the limp, is that what they say? Pack the limp, as all the hockey <laughs> players <laughs> say. Yeah, well, get, side, get a winning season. Game coming up. Yeah, big West Side game, game coming up. For basketball? No, no, hockey. hockey. Oh, true. Anyone know the I think date? it's either the 20 or the 22nd. I might be wrong. I believe it's the 22nd. 22nd, yeah. 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 At, at home, don't forget. At home, but it's at the limp. Yeah, that's for sure, but... No, yeah, it's a good time of year. I feel like this time of year is the best time of year. From usually from like, 
Halloweenish to New Year's, it's a good time of year with like I don't know, like basic like holiday stuff and whatnot. But sports kicking up. Sports yeah. kicking up. Sports, like wrestling, it. basketball. Shred the slopes. A lot of, slopes a lot of hard workers this season. I know. Soon enough, it's gonna be the end of the year. Yep. Yeah, but once the year ends, it's just gonna be a depressing time of year. I mean, oh yeah. No yeah. one likes the slushy snow and stuff. No. no. But yeah, enjoy it now, right? Yeah, you do. That's what it's all about, boys. So that's that's all the time we have for uh, today's episode of Critical Content with your hosts Jake and Ben. Um, Excellent. Well, uh, tune in next time. We'll have a whole new set of guests, but same new uh, hosts. Thank you. Hey,